in the pulpit. Hello? I'm still not old enough to be in this pulpit. Can I get an amen? It, it, you're just never ready for this. This is not something that, that I've taken lightly or ever will take lightly. But I pray that the wisdom of God as I preach would truly, truly saturate your thinking, your being, and uh, your life. Because to me, nothing is more important than you seeking God and you seeking God with all that you are and all that you do. Amen? Uh, that, that still is my, that's how we started church. We started church um, because, actually we didn't really start church, we started a small group and it turned into church, but we started with the, with, with the mindset and the philosophy that all we wanted to see was people's lives change through the power of the word and through the power of the spirit. And what we have found is that church for us has become the avenue or not even the avenue has become the vehicle in which we get to see that happen. We, 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 we fell into, we accidentally started church planting. We don't know how that happened. We just know that this is what we started doing because this was the way to reach more people. We still believe that. We still believe that, that this is still the way to reach more people and small groups and Bible studies and fellowships are still the way to reach more people. And I believe that if we as a people would go ahead and, and embrace that and go ahead and believe that and go ahead and start walking that, we would see lives changing. And we may not see them supernaturally, miraculously change the entire city of Reading, but I bet you that it will change your, your, your circle of influence. It will change the people that are closest to you, and those people will continue to change. So as we pray today, as we, as we, we, we worship today, one of the things that, 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 that the theme of, everything, of, of, of what was happening was this, this idea of blessing raining down. Did you get that? That the Spirit of God is here, you know, the blessing of God is here, rain down the blessing of God, open the windows of heaven, give us more than what we can contain. And at times it feels that we don't always talk about the blessings of God. We sometimes, we, 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 we allude to them, we talk about them, but I want to tell you and I want to be a witness to tell you that God wants to bless you. Like any father, like any parent, we want our children to be blessed we want them to be blessed. We want to be the blessing. And part of the issue and part of the problem ends up is that, that sometimes as children, we don't know how to receive that. We, we, we don't know if, and as you, become old, as you become an older child like I am, now just 50, you begin to realize that I don't deserve this blessing. But let me tell you, you may not deserve the blessing, but God loves you so much that he wants to bless you. There's an attitude that has happened, and it's happened in the church, and, and it's happened in churches worldwide, that people do not understand how much God loves you. And it's great that we as evangelical, and, and we as, 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 as God-fearing people and Bible-believing people, that, we, that you know, we, 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 we understand that Jesus came to this world. We understand that he came to die for, your, for our sins. We understand that God so loved the world, come on somebody, that he gave his only, we understand that he gave his only son because he loves us. But after that point, I want to tell you that God still loves you, he wants to love you, and he wants to shower you with his love. And that's called the blessing. Can I get an amen? It's great to shout and holler about a blessing. One of the best, me uh, one of the best things to preach about. I love preaching about the resurrection. I love preaching about, uh, about Pentecost. I love preaching about the Spirit. And I love preaching about the blessings of God. But as, I, as we get here and, and we're, we're in John chapter 18. And we enter John chapter 18. And, 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 and let me tell you right now. We, we're not going to quite jump into all of John 18 right now. Because John 18 the, 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 it starts in a place that already some things have happened. John 18 starts, starts already in the Garden of Gethsemane and already starts where, where, where things are already happening in the garden. And, and just to, it's, it won't be on the board, but just, I, just, I just want to read John 18 in the beginning. John 18, he says, when Jesus had spoken these words, those were the words of last week, and we understand the prayers that he prayed. He went on with his disciples over the brook of Kidron where there was a garden which... His disciples entered. And Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. Verse 3, then 
Judas, having received a detachment of troops and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. So understand where we are in John 18, Judas has already showed up. But there's a portion of John 8, there's a portion of the Garden of Gethsemane that, that, that the author of the book of John does not cover, does not explain. And I felt as I was reading this that I felt like we needed some more background information on what was happening here. Verse 4 in John 18 says, Jesus therefore knowing all things that would come upon him went forward and said to them, whom are you seeking? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Watch this. Jesus said to them, I am he. And Judas, who betrayed him, also stood with them. Now when he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. The Bible says in verse 6 that when he revealed who he was, the glory and the power of God was so intense in that moment in the garden that they had to withdraw and they fell out like a good Pentecostal service. Come on, somebody. This is the reality and the truth of the glory of God that when you come into the presence of God, something supernatural must happen, does happen in the true power of God that you have absolutely no control. Either something's going to happen in the sense of fear that's going to rock you to your knees or the spirit and overwhelming Shekinah glory of God will make you just fall out. And it's great to talk about that and talk about the glory of God. But there were some things that had happened before this point. There's some things that must happen before this actually occurs. Before people begin to fall out. Before they recognize who he is. And I want to share it with you from, John, from, from Matthew 26. Matthew 26 is where I really want to concentrate on, on what happens here. How is it that the glory of God, that the, that, the, that the Shekinah of God shows up in this place? I want to tell you something that where, where, where there is a spiritual battle, the Spirit of God is there. Listen, when you enter into a spiritual battle, know that God is there. I, I, I hate, to, I hate to, to, to give you a little bit of, I don't know, uh, I don't want to, it's not really bad news because the Bible tells us that, 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 that w w when the devil comes in like a flood, uh, the standard of God, 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 God's standard comes in. See, I, I don't really, I, I, I hate this part, and I hate, I hate's a strong word, I, I dislike, I, I'm, un, no, I, I'm uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable with the idea that I got to go through something to see God. Uh, truth be told, I just, I really would just like to see God. <laughs> without the fear, without the trembling, I just want to like, yo, Jesus, what's up? <laughs> can, can you just touch, can you touch, no, last time you touched somebody's hip, they didn't walk right. Can you, no, don't touch the shoulder either. I want to be able, can you just touch my heart then? <laughs> But don't make it hurt. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to talk about that hit someday. But, but, but there's got to be a battle. There's got to be something in spiritual realms that, that are occurring for God to show up. When you think that you're in the worst of it, that's when he's there. When you think that there's, that there's no hope, that's when he's there. The problem is, like I've said before, it's really hard to recognize the Lord in the middle of a storm. Matthew 26, starting in verse 36. Ears. Ears. Hearts. Father, this is our testimony today, that our ears are open, our hearts are ready for whatever it is that you would have to say to us. Speak clearly as we, as we dive into your word today, Lord God, that we may get something, just a just a, a little crumb, a little piece of bread today. Let that be our daily bread today, that we may hear this word and live this word and be about this word so that it does cause life transformation inside of us individually, collectively, as a church and as a people, that we may impact the rest of this world for your sake. Oh, God, have your way, I pray in your name. And everybody said, 
So here we are in, in Matthew. Matthew. Matthew takes a little bit more detail in this Garden of Gethsemane experience. And in verse 36, he says, then Jesus came with them to, to Matthew 26, starting in verse 36. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to his disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. So sit here, I'm going there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He says, I'm so distraught. I'm so distressed. And, and, and for some of you, I hope this sets you free. Because some of you suffer with worry and anxiety and issues that you just, you just don't know where they come from or are controlled. But Jesus, I want to let you know that, that Jesus suffered through this as well. He says, he says, I am so distressed. I am deeply distressed. And he says, to, my soul is, ex I am so upset. I am so full of sorrow and anguish that, 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 that it's even to death. I feel like I'm about to die. It's not funny, but when you look at this, he's saying, not only do I feel like I'm about to die, but truth be told, he's about to die. It's one thing when you feel like you're about to die. It's another thing when you know you're about to die. I want you to know that when he's speaking of this point here in his, in his life, he's saying, I'm distressed, I'm deeply distressed. My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to the point of death. He's not yet talking about the death on the cross yet. He's not talking about the pain, the physical pain. This isn't physical pain. This is emotional pain. This is soul pain. This is the kind of thing that happens in your head. This is the kind of thing that, 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 that just immobilizes you. These are the kinds of things that when you go through life, you're just stuck in a spot and you don't know what to do. All you want to do is crawl up in a ball in a corner in a dark room and die i know i'm not talking to nobody out here that's ever suffered with this depression or distress in this kind of fashion I, I know that all of you that have been out here and been saved for a minute or two i know you are holy and you're full of joy and you're full of glory and you don't have these kind of issues i know that i'm talking to somebody for real that's going to be watching this later that is going through some things in their life that they just can't explain and when it hits them so hard they feel Maybe I'm just talking to me today. Oh, glory. Jesus says, Jesus says, 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 says look, look, I'm going through it right now. Uh, uh, I'm you, you don't know what I'm about ready to go through because the cross, the, the pain, all that kind of stuff that's getting ready to happen that I know about that you don't know about, that's just physical pain. But I'm getting ready to go into some spiritual warfare that you ain't got a clue about. But I need you. I need you to hang out with me. I need you to watch with me. I don't need you to do anything. I just need you to watch with me. I need you to pray with me. I need you to just be there. Don't say a word. Don't do a thing. J can you just be there for me? This, this, this watch with me, it watch, is usually the translation of one of two Greek words. Uh, um, one of them is, 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 and forgive me if I mispronounce it, but one is Gregorio, and the other one is Agretnio, which both have similar meanings. And it means to stay awake. I don't need you to do nothing. I, I don't need you to get nothing. I don't need you to lay hands. I don't need you. I just need you to stay awake. Th these words are usually meant in a metaphorical and a spiritual sense. Th th I, look, I, I don't, 
whether or not you're awake, I need you to stay awake spiritually. I need you to be aware of what's happening in the realm of the spirit around us. Because we're in the Garden of Gethsemane, and Gethsemane, by the very nature of, of how John explains it, is they go into this garden, which gives us an idea that this garden is walled. So they're in a, they went into a physical location called the garden that is walled, and Jesus is saying to them, I need you to be aware, I need you to be awake of what's happening spiritually around you. Because in a few minutes, these guards are going to walk in, and they're going to pass out, and they don't know it yet. We read that in John. It, it's this, be vigilant, be on guard, be aware, be focused. I, I want to give us natural background on this as well. Because if you remember correctly, here we are now in the Garden of Gethsemane, and what just happened before that, uh, before John 18? What happens before, before the Garden of Gethsemane? Do you remember? Well, what just happened before Jesus went to the cross? What? After Palm Sunday, before the cross. Passover. What just happened? The Seder. They just had the Last Supper. They just hung out. And for you that have, have, have been to a Seder meal, you know what they do at a Seder meal. They eat. And they eat good. And they eat for hours. And, and, and I know we Pentecost love in here, and we kind of like try to refrain from, you know, we, we, we don't want to be filled the wrong way. <laughs> we we, we want to be filled with the Spirit, hello? We don't want to be taken to too much wine. We just want enough to make our bellies feel good like Paul told Timmy, right? Hello? Uh, we, 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 but let me tell you that back in that days, when they sat down to eat, they sat down to drink. And I know some people would want to say, oh, that wasn't fermented grape. That was just grape. No, it wasn't just grape juice. That wasn't just grape juice. They sat at that table and had four full glasses of wine that we know of. Because my people, they would have had a bottle of rum sitting right next to Hello? They would have been dipping like, yo, Pete, you want some? <laughs> Can I get you a hit? <laughs> no? I'm talking about my people. No? I'm talking to the wrong people then, right? No? <laughs> Here, get a little bit out of it. Hey, have you tried this flask? Oh. You, you, you know you're crazy when, when, you can, when you can spike the punch, but you're really crazy when you spike the wine. <laughs> Hello? I mean, come on. You know, people argue this point, and, and, and you know, if you know me, I am, I am, I am, I am, I'm not anti-alcohol, uh, but I do believe that, that we need to refrain from alcohol. Hello? I don't, I don't think that's something that we should just be like, yo, you know, uh, you, come, you come to my house and you ain't going to get nothing to drink. Uh, you just ain't. You might get some iced tea, some water. Uh, my wife will make a punch and make it taste like something it ain't supposed to, but um, that's it. Unless my mom is there. Now, if my mom is there, she may spike the punch on you, but hey, you know, but that's mom. Um, and, and I know some of you will turn around and be like, oh, yeah, I cook, I cook with wine. It, the wine cooks out. Shut up. No, it don't. I've been, I've been to a restaurant. I'm not going to leave them nameless, okay? What? I've been to a restaurant, uh, an Italian restaurant, and I went in there with a pastor for the first time when they first opened up. Out there in uh, in in, in uh, Sinking Spring, what's the name of that place? No, don't tell me. Um, and I was like, well, you know, this, I, I, when I go out, I, I I try to stay stay to safe food that I know about. So I had me some meatballs, and I went with this pastor because this pastor took me there. And you know, it'd been a while since I had some drink, and I sat down at that table and I was like, I was like, yo, Rod, this, you smell that? So I was like. Oh, yeah, that's, they, they, they cook with wine here. And I'm like, but brother, <laughs> it tastes good, but it's got a, it tastes like it's still got a lot of wine in it. Oh, yeah, don't worry about that. that, 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 that that's been cooked away. Yo, I got done eating those three big fat meatballs because that's all they give you in these restaurants. I'm talking about fat meatballs. And I got up off that table, and I was like, yo, <laughs> we, 
<laughs> we need to sit down because I can't drive. <laughs> I got drunk off of three meatballs. I think that's the kind of wine that Jesus made. It was so good that all you need to do is eat the meatballs. Forget it. I'm just leaving that alone. But I want you to understand that here they are. They got some, they got some serious. They got some, what do they call that? What do they call that? Uh, um, after you get done eating, uh, that coma. What? Food coma? They just got done with some serious food coma. They got the, as, they got the itis. Anybody, any, anybody ever eat so much that it hurts that all you can do is lay back and just let it sit there? No, just me because I got the big belly? No? Come on. Where my belly's at? Hello? And, and it's just so, so far. You add, you add food coma, and then you got a food coma, and then you had four glasses of wine to go with it? Now, please don't get me, don't get me wrong because my... You know, somebody else would be like, oh, they weren't drunk. They were just buzzed. And then that commercial comes into my, into my mind. Buzz driving is drunk driving. <laughs> you know, wh when do you cut off? When do you cut it off? You know, um, when do you cross the line? I don't know, and I'm not here to, to argue that point. What I am saying is that these guys had eaten good and they drank good. And now they just took a short walk over to the Garden of Gethsemane. Now, three of them, the special one said, Jesus said, Jesus said to them, why don't you come and watch with me? He said, he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Understand, Jesus already got done drinking the other wine. He's in the garden. He didn't bring a, a glass with him. It's not like he walked out. He, he didn't walk out with the, out of the Seder meal with a cup going, Hey, my solo cup, where's it at? No. No. He said to the disciples, he said, then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, what? Could you not watch with me for one hour? And Peter's like, no. <laughs> he can't. Physically, he can't. But there's got to be something that happens that goes beyond the physical that we ourselves, when we can't do it physically, we have to enter in spiritually. There are some things you can't do in the natural that can only be done in the supernatural. You can't do it in the flesh. It must be done in the spirit. Jesus said, watch and pray with me. It had nothing to do with the physical flesh. It had everything to do with entering in, into the spiritual realm. He said, watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing. Your spirit is willing. The spirit's intentions are good, but the flesh is weak. There are some things that you cannot do by mere willpower. You can't think yourself clean. Oh, I ain't talking to nobody today. You can't think yourself sober. You can't think yourself good. You can't think yourself right. It is a spiritual watching coupled with prayer that gives one the strength to survive temptations and difficult situations. For too long, we've been trying to do it in the flesh. We've been reading the, 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 the seven steps on how to do this and the seven principles of that. But what we need is just one principle, and his name is Jesus. And then again, a second time, verse 42. He went away and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if this cup cannot pass from me unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Sometimes the Lord is going to let you take a nap. So he left them, 
went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Matthew, that was Matthew's description. Luke describes it in his gospel. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly than his sweat became like drops of blood falling down to the ground. Philippians says it, even in agony with blood coming out of his pores, Jesus chose becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. When Jesus prayed and he had entered into the spiritual realm, he knew what he was about to face and it had nothing to do with the pain of the ripping of his body, but had to do with the anguish and the sorrowness of the sins of the world. Please understand that the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ was a very real thing and was a very painful thing for our Lord, both physically and spiritually. In verse 45, then he came to his disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. We jump into John 18. This morning, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the danger of falling asleep. I've titled this message, If You Snooze, You Lose. I, I want today to be a day about us focusing not on the negatives and the oh my God, I'm so full of sin and I'm going to hell portions of it. I want us to know that he loved you so much that he was willing to go through such pain. And, and, and see, and when we read that last scripture that, we, that, that in Philippians, becoming obedient even to death, even death to, on the cross, we forget about the blood coming out of his pores before him going to the cross. We forget that there was a sorrowful and, and, and a pain and an anguish that was happening inside of Jesus before it ever happened on the outside on his body. We can eat more easily relate, if we think about it, to physical pain. Because let me tell you, I can't. <laughs> Look, you whipped me one time. I remember when I was a kid, my mom would whoop me one time, and I'd give up all kinds of state secrets. Mm-mm. I'm glad I was never a, PW, uh, a POW. I'm glad I was never, I, mm-mm, I, I was scared. I was scared. Kill me before you strap me to a chair and try to torture me. Waterboarding? Oh, no. Uh-uh, no, no, no. Can't swim. I, I don't like what. What do you want to know? Yes, Trump did it. You know? <laughs> Hello? No? <laughs> I, I'm just being honest. Yeah. <laughs> Supposed to be some kind of hero. No, my name is not Jack Bauer. Hello? Not doing it. Not doing it. But more realistically, when we talk about the physical pain of things and we can relate to physical pain, we've never really taken an opportunity to really meditate or think about emotional pain. And whatever emotional pain that you've been through, have gone through, are going through, whatever experiences that you've had in your life, then I'm sure that if you've lived, if you've lived it all, you've suffered some pain. Can I get an amen this morning? See, you can't, you can't go through this life without feeling something. If you haven't felt nothing, you haven't lived yet. No? I'm not talking to nobody? Mm, I'm going to throw one in there too. And if you just take a moment to think about your worst anguish, your worst sorrow moment, whether it be the loss of a husband or a wife or a child, whether it be the loss of an opportunity, a job, or a girlfriend or a boyfriend, whether it was the loss of whatever it is that you have, may have lost. I want you to know that the Bible says in Isaiah that he is acquainted with our sorrow. That the type of sorrow that Jesus went through is so much deeper than what we've ever experienced. But yet, 
He has empathy for us. If you snooze, you lose. Many people have closed their eyes to the things of the Lord, and today I am hoping that the Spirit of God will open up our eyes. As a result, the blessing of God may have slipped right past them as they slept through their life. I don't want you to be that guy. I don't want you to be that gal. I don't want you to be the one that, that 10 years from now would, turns around and says, woulda, shoulda, coulda. Uh, I, 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 listen, I, 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 am a little bit, I am a little bit more reserved now as older as I get um, about taking risks. But come on, people, let's take some risks. Let's take a chance on God. Not on your thoughts, not on your things. Not on what, let's take a chance on God. When you go to take a risk, ask the question first, how much glory can God get from this? How much, and then take that risk. Sometimes we sit back waiting for the actual perfect moment to go serve God, and God is just saying, just take a risk now. Sometimes you've got to step into the water and wait for the water. You know, sometimes you step into the water, as it would happen with Moses, you step in the water and the, and the water's part. Sometimes you got to step into the water and wait for that thing to get chin high before the waters part. The Christian life and the blessings that come our way, I want to tell you that are, is part of God's design and plan for yours. The loving and merciful and gracious God that we know wants to bless you, and he's put it as part of his design for your life and his plan for your life. God really does seek those. God really does bless those that seek him. He wants to bless you. And the more you seek him. And, and you know what's interesting about that is I try to relate it as a dad. The more... My kids seek me, and they're in the room, so I wish, uh, close your ears, kids. Um, the more they seek me, the more I want to bless them. The more I want to be with them. The more I want to give them. The more they ignore me, well, I'm not God, hello? And with God, and, and I, I try to relate it from that parental perspective, and then I realize, you know what? My God, my Heavenly Father, is not like me. I think and believe now that it's not that God isn't blessing you. It's that when you're not seeking Him, you don't see His blessing. He's already blessed you and is blessing you and continues to bless you. And His plan for your life is to bless you, but you can't see it because you're not seeking Him. It's not that you get more blessing when you seek him. It's that you just don't see the blessing. Come on, somebody. That's good preaching for a Sunday morning. Hebrews eleven six puts it this way. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And I'm convinced, but based on other scriptures, that you are already blessed. You only see it when you're seeking him. Watch and pray. Don't sleep. Watch and pray so that you don't lose while you snooze. Don't sleep on your blessing. Psalm 1, starting in verse 1, says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in the law he meditates day and night. Blessed is the man. This is, this is something that is already, you already walk in your blessing. Actively pursue both spiritual and physical. Please understand that this is not just a spiritual blessing, but it is as well a physical blessing. It is something that is manifested here on earth in the now. In other words, the one that does these things is already blessed. The one that does not stand in the path of sinners. The one that does not sit in the counsel of the scornful. The one that delights in the law of the Lord 
and meditates on it day and night is already a blessed man. So I tell you, choose your counsel and your friends carefully. Not everybody should be able to speak into your life. Watch and pray so that you don't fall or you don't lose while you snooze. Watch and pray because some people that attach themselves to you have no business hanging on to you. I don't know who I'm talking to today. I don't and some of you and some of you go on with the oh but they family. Oh but they my they my friends. Look, you can have all the friends you want, you can have all the families you want. But to be honest, and this is selfish now, I, I understand that. I, this is very self centered, selfish, I, I get it. But you're gonna pass on the blessing of God because your friends are trying to get you or do to you or be with you or just plainly bring you down? Sometimes you don't realize how blessed you are because you're too busy being pitiful. You can't be blessed and pitiful at the same time. You just can't. You can't. You could try, but you're so into your pity that you don't see how good God is. Because if you saw how good God is, you'd realize that you ain't pitiful at all. And I'm telling you right now, there's not a person in here that's pitiful. Not a one. Not a one. There ain't a person in here that's pitiful. Every one of you is blessed by God, is a son and daughter of God, is the son and daughter of the Most High God, is king and queen. Oh, my God, don't you realize how blessed you are? You're still breathing this morning. You're still, oh, you're, mm, chokatara la rashido, so. I'm going to hold myself. I'm going to hold myself. Mm. There's a Spanish saying that, that says, Dime con quien andas y te, y te diré quien eres. Tell me who you hang out with and I'll tell you who you are. I'm going to tell you right now. You, hung, you hanging out on the corner? Don't tell me. Look, you can be hanging out on the corner with a bibble in your hand and still sell dope. The only thing this does is maybe deters a cop or two. I ain't talking to nobody today. Look, if I was a real gangster, these pages would be cut out, and this is where I'd keep my stash. I'd even show up on the street with a little white collar, standing on the corner talking about 15. Here. Lord bless you. What? Y'all don't like to hear about that stuff in church, do you? I just hope I didn't give nobody any ideas. Hello? Choose your counsel. Love the word of God, the Bible says in Psalms. It says, think about his word day and night. How long can you go without thinking about the Word of God? Really, how long can you go? I, I, I would like for us as a people to be able to understand how much we need the Word of God. If we understood that the Word of God we need as much as we need food and water. Now, I understand some of us can fast for a minute or two. I, I can afford a meal or two. Don't say amen. Say oh my. <laughs> Hello? But after a while, I need some nourishment. I need me, I, I, mean, I need, I need me, be, 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 be. I'm so hungry, I can't even speak right now. I need me some rice. I need me some beans. I need me some pork. I need me some chicken. Hello? I'm tired of Subway. Two pieces of bread and some meat and cheese, mayonnaise on it. I, I get tired of that. Talk about going to McDonald's for, for, for another double cheese? No, 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 no. Give me some food. This is food for my soul. This is food for my living. And when I think about this and I meditate on this, it makes me want to live this. See, you, you get, get, get what I'm saying. When you're reading this, when you're studying this, when you're meditating on this, when you're thinking about this, 
makes you more healthy. It makes you want to seek God more. It makes you realize, boy, am I blessed. Love the Word of God. When there's a conflict between what the world says and what God says, listen to God. Stop compromising on because of because of, 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 of what the world says. I'm almost done, I promise. I told you it was going to be a short message. I want us to know that since being taken, most commonly known as the rapture, is the next event on God's prophetic calendar, we should not fall asleep while we wait. Don't sleep while waiting on eternity. We want to enter into eternity and hear the Father say, well done, my good and faithful. We want to hear the words, well done, by God. So be ready. Matthew 24, 44 says, so you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect Him. He will show up when you ain't ready. So when are you supposed to be ready then? All the time. All the time. So be ready. Be holy. 2 Peter 3.14 says, So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him, we must continually set our minds on Christ that we might be renewed in our thinking and transformed in our lives. We must be renewed in our thinking because in our thinking is where life transformation occurs. If you think it, you become it. Because you will do everything you can to be it. If you think you're sorrowful, if you think you're pitiful, then guess what? You will become pitiful. If you think that you can do it through Christ who strengthens you, you can do it. Because it is Christ who strengthens you. I, I just got set free. So be ready, be holy, be hopeful. Titus 2.13 puts it like this. While we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior. Let's not fall asleep. Let's not snooze and lose while we're waiting. Let's be hopeful. Be hopeful while we wait. I dare you to be at home one day cooking, cleaning, washing dishes, doing whatever you do, and just stop for a second and think about it. And think about the day that our God, the, the, the appearing of our, of our glorious God. Just think about it. Just take a second. And then just go like this. Because it could happen in that moment. And when you live with that reality that it could happen in that moment, become hopeful be ready be holy be hopeful and number four be encouraged first Thessalonians 4 18 says therefore encourage each other with these words what I am doing right now is encouraging you with these words let's not leave the truth and the fact that our king is coming soon but before he comes soon, he comes for you first. We, we get that theology messed up. We, we, that, that, that's, sometimes we get that theology messed up. The rapture happens before the king comes. So if you start thinking that before Jesus returns, he's calling you first. He's going to rapture the church first. Let's not forget that. Let's encourage each other with that. When, when we're messed up a little bit, and we're, we're, could, could, you, could you encourage somebody by saying, hey, by the way, the rapture's coming. Not from a negative perspective. It's a positive perspective. 
Let somebody know. Next time they're, 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 they're down or they're hopeless or, hey, guess what? I got good news. Yeah, I know. You know that Jesus loves you and he died for your sins and, and that heaven's good. But did you know that the rapture's coming? Do you know the rapture can come like, oh, wait a minute, wait, let me check. Okay, no, you know the rapture can come later? <laughs> how much, how will that affect and impact the way you live your life? Knowing that at any second, at any moment, at any instant, in the blink of, a lot, of an eye, we'll be gone. You'll be gone. I just hope I go with you. Hello? Come on, somebody. So I'm going to be ready, I'm going to be holy, I'm going to be hopeful, and I'm going to be encouraged. Because guess what? It may happen next time. Wouldn't that be a trip? <laughs> wouldn't, it be, wouldn't it be jacked up if I went like this and, saw, and, and, and most of us left and you looked around and were like, wait, wait, where did everybody go? I mean, really, can, I'm sorry. I, I know I said I'd, I'd almost be done, but I, I, let me just take uh, just five seconds. I wish I had that video. There, there's a video I'm going to play next week. Uh, but, but, but could you imagine? What would you do? What would you do in that moment if the rapture was to happen right now? What would you do if you stayed in those pews? Huh? What would you do? Huh? I ain't got a clue. I, I'd be like, at first, I'd be like, I, if it was me, can, can, I, can I just be real with you just for about five seconds? I mean, I'll, I'll have to edit this portion out of the video. But, but I'd probably look around and go, oh, where'd everybody go? <laughs> I'd be like, oh, 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 my God! I would probably poop all over myself, just spiritually and physically and emotionally. I would just do it. I would just, because nothing else would matter at that point. I would be going, listen, I, I know there's a lot of people that, that specialize in the book of Revelation as far as uh, the uh, post-trib, mid-trib, and uh, I mean uh, pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. And then there's those people that just believe in pan-trib. I mean, in other words, it'll just all pan out in the end. Um, so if I get left behind for whatever reason, I'm going to look for some of my friends that believed in, in mid-trib stuff or in post-trib stuff, okay, that specialized in the whole uh, martyrdom of the saints that were left behind. No, I, I don't want my head cut off. I want to be raptured. Anybody? I just told you I can't stand pain. too emo for that. No, I'm not talking to nobody today. No. They, 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 you, you're not allowed to have this much fun in church. Ben, you can't have this much fun in church. Church is not supposed to be fun. Ben's up there looking at me like, this is probably one of the most boring messages I have ever. I came all the way to America to hear you. Come on. And this is, and do this, understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber. Because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing, and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. And do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. The psalmist wrote, He will not allow your foot to slip, he who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep.
I intended this message to be short. I hope it was short enough. Because I wanted us an opportunity to really do, really get preheated before we enter in. I wanted us to have this moment to be able to say, I want to watch and pray. And I want us to do it in a real spirit and truth format. And a lot of times it happens, I know it happens to me, we come to church, we, we, we sing some songs, we hear the message and we go right home. So I wanted to change that a little bit for today. And maybe for the future, I don't know. But I wanted us to, to get our worship on and get our praise on. Or actually to get our praise on and now for us to get our worship on. I wanted us for this word to impact us in such a way that we could look at it and go, you know what? I want to watch and pray. I want to be all those things. I want to be watchful. I want to be holy. I want to be ready. Would you stand with me? And as Eli plays the next song, the next couple songs, we're going to enter into a moment of worship. And, and, and as he begins to do that, if you would just go ahead and find a place and when you're ready, just come out here and find a place to worship. And really examine yourself. If you need prayer, great. Grab one of the pastors. Pastor Joey's here. Pastor Cheyenne's here. Um, Richard's here. Adela's here. Just tap one of them as you're up here working.